If you're going to be studying to do ministry in the church, the question is, do you need Greek for that? Do you need to know Greek? Do I need Greek if I'm going to be doing preaching, for instance? Do I need Greek if I'm going to be doing biblical counseling? Do I need Greek if I'm studying church history, maybe at a doctoral level or even at a master's level? Do I need to know Greek if I'm going to be learning worldview or apologetics? Those are great questions. And in this video, I'm going to look at four reasons why I think learning Greek could be helpful if you're studying in one of those areas. Hi, I'm Daryl Berling from Biblical Mastery Academy, here to help you with the tools, habits, and systems to master the Greek of the New Testament so that you can learn to read it and study it like a scholar. So in this video, like I said, I, we're asking the question of whether biblical counseling is going to be helpful for you if you're doing a degree or maybe an advanced degree that normally wouldn't require Greek or perhaps even Hebrew for that matter. But the question we're asking today, is it of any advantage to learn Greek if you're going to go and do a course a little bit like this. And since my PhD is also in biblical counseling, I thought it would be worth taking a little bit of time to actually think about and unpack this question. So here we go. And the first one really is the one that should make the most sense to you. And that is that if you learn Greek, it's gonna give you better tools for exegeting the text of the New Testament, which gives you the ability then to have greater clarity in your studies inside the New Testament. Now, here's the thing. I've read a lot of books on biblical counseling, various aspects of biblical counseling, and they're really good books, generally speaking. So I'm, I'm not trying to get at anybody for not having Greek in there or anything like that. But one thing that is consistent in these books is that they tend to depend on other people in their study of the original languages, which means that these books are actually using secondary or in some cases even tertiary sources. Now again, that isn't necessarily a big deal if your focus is to actually counsel other people. However, there can be some real advantages of knowing Greek when you come to the task of exegeting the text yourself. And I think for biblical counseling in particular, this is going to be really helpful. The reason is that biblical counseling requires a lot of the time for you to be working directly with people you're trying to help. Now, here's the thing. The better you know and understand the lessons you're trying to, you know, teach these people, these people you're trying to help, uh, the greater the effect you're going to see in their lives. And so I want to encourage you, if you're really going to do that homework, that preparation for each counseling session, then I want to encourage you to consider in doing that, actually doing it with the original languages in mind. It's going to be a little bit more time consuming perhaps to start with, but we'll come back to that because we can, we can sort of help with that a little bit. But at the same time, you're going to get better riches out of the time that you spend doing that study. And that means then that you're going to have more applicability to the situation that you're dealing with, which means you're going to have greater impact in their lives. And this is the thing really, is that the more time you spend, the deeper you are in the Word of God, the more powerful the things you learn from the Word of God are going to be in the lives of the people you try to help. Because you're not just going to give them rote answers or uh, responses that you've read in a book somewhere. These are things coming to you from the scriptures, from your own study, which is really where you've started to apply it to yourself and therefore can apply it to other people with more clarity and more confidence. And that's really what you want when you come to help other people understand the word of God. And so you can see this applies not only to counseling, but even to preaching for that matter as well. If you wanna have greater power in what you're teaching, you wanna have better fluency, greater capability with the original languages. Those two things go together. The deeper you are in the text, the richer your interaction with the text, the richer your teaching is going to be as well. And the way to get closest to the original is to actually read the original. So why wouldn't you do that? So the first benefit of knowing Greek when you come to the task of counseling or preaching or apologetics or church history or whatever it happens to be, is that you're gonna be able to go to the text itself and have greater clarity there, which is gonna give you more capability, more power if you like, when you come to apply that to the lives of other people. The second benefit of knowing the language is you're going to spend a lot less time working with commentaries. And I'm going to, we've got two points when it comes to things like commentaries. But the first one is you're going to spend less time in commentaries if you know the language and know it well. And you might be thinking, well, how is that the case? Well, the answer is that effectively, a lot of the time you go to the commentaries, you're asking the question, what does this mean? And the thing about translations are, you can have two translations that read quite differently, both of which are quite faithful to the text. Well, how do you know which one's which? This is what drives you back to commentaries. You're going, well, this guy says this, or this guy says this, or this translation puts it this way, this translation puts it that way, there are different implications of that, so which one of these is correct? 
Now, the part of the reason of going back to commentaries is to try and adjudicate between those two positions. So if you can eliminate the adjudication between those positions by simply saying, well, I can read the Greek and therefore I can see that both of these have got an aspect of validity to them, then you don't actually end up spending a whole bunch of time going back to commentaries to ask those questions, which means you're gonna spend less time in the commentaries trying to work out what does this text actually mean because you see it for yourself when you look at the text in the original language. So then, you'll be able to exegete the text with greater clarity, you'll spend less time in commentaries. Thirdly, you'll also gain access to technical commentaries for which you'll have very limited use if you don't know the languages. Here's what I mean. There are three different types of commentaries that are on the market today. There are devotional commentaries, there are not that many of these, they are that common, but are out there. There are expositional commentaries, which is probably the majority of commentaries. And then there are what's called technical commentaries or exegetical commentaries. These exegetical commentaries are the ones we're talking about here. Now, expositional commentaries typically have the English text and then an explanation of what that means and how it applies. These are often based on sermons, hence they're called expositional uh, commentaries. But they can also just be somebody's writing out of a Bible study or something like that. Now, the MacArthur Study Bible, uh, and even to some extent the Pillar Bible Commentary is actually good examples of these. The Pillar's probably somewhere in between a expositional and exegetical commentary. It's got some exegetical notes at times which are really helpful. But you're gonna miss out on other commentaries such as the Baker Exegetical Commentary or the EEC or some of these other much more exegetical commentaries that are going to be much more focused on the Greek text. These are the commentaries that will typically give you the Greek text and then an explanation of that. These provide you with an excellent ex understanding of the arguments that the Greek text could be understood to make. These are the commentaries that are going to evaluate the different ways the genitive or in verb or whatever it is could be working in the context, which are going to give you access to understand the different arguments behind what this verse may mean, as well as what this verse, how this verse can be applied. So if you don't know the languages, those discussions are pretty much useless because you're not in a position to be able to make a decision between what this exegetical commentator says and what this exegetical commentator says. And so you're going to be stuck. The answer to solve that problem is if you know the languages, then you can go to those commentaries, you can evaluate those two different arguments because you understand them, and you can actually make a decision for the right reasons because you know the language. Which means that even though you're spending less time in commentaries generally, you're gonna get a lot more value out of them because you're gonna to go to them for the right reasons and you're gonna to go to the right kind of commentaries and you're gonna get the right kind of results. Which means your time and study is gonna be more effective and more efficient and more productive. Who doesn't want that? If you're getting value out of this video, can I encourage you to hit the like button and also subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so. It really helps this, this channel out a lot if you do that and I really appreciate your support and your help. Thanks so much. Let's get back to it. So the first reason that learning the original languages of the Bible and particularly Greek is going to be helpful if you're doing say Christian preaching or biblical counseling or apologetics or whatever degree it might happen to be is that it's going to allow you to exegete the text with greater clarity. The second reason is that you're going to spend less time in commentaries. The third reason is that it's going to give you access to technical commentaries and more in-depth arguments and discussions around the text. Fourthly, it's going to allow you to engage with a wider variety of texts. One of the things that we often don't really realize is just how cut off we are from church history when all we have is English translations. The English language is not a particularly old language. Yes, there's old English. We can go back to, you know, Grenville and Beowulf and look at old English texts that way. But that's a very different language to what we have in the modern era. Really, the English that we have today goes back around to about the 1400s, really to Chaucer, and then into the 1500s, 1600s, uh, with Shakespeare and so on. So it's not that old as a language, and there's a lot of texts that predate that that are from church history. Now, granted, a lot of these have been translated into English, but Throughout church history, the doctors of the church, as they are called, uh, have interacted with these ancient texts in their original languages. So Augustine, Aquinas, Luther, 
Calvin all understood the original languages and went back to the sources of the ancient church themselves to the first, second and third century and even into the fourth century with Latin as they often knew that as well or like Augustine natively spoke Latin. But the point is that if you wanted to go back to the very earliest parts of the church and study what the early church fathers said, you'd need to know Greek. Those doctors of the church all understood the original language. If you want to be able to follow their arguments well, then you'll benefit from knowing the original languages. So particularly if you're doing doctoral work, you will really need to have a good grasp on Greek, I think, to be able to do a really good study of what they're arguing for. It's one thing just to quote them, it's another thing to see how they are working with those original texts. And that's my encouragement if you are doing studies in those, those sort of older areas, and particularly if you're doing church history and whatnot, those are the, a great area those are a great opportunity to go deeper to understand, well, how did, say, Calvin or Luther or Augustine understand, say, the Didache? Uh, how did they draw on that in their writing? Those are the sorts of things that you can actually follow. And if you don't know the original languages, that's much harder to do. Bear in mind also that the Western church for the first 400 years of its life was primarily Greek. The Eastern Church stayed Greek all the way through to the modern period. So that means there's this huge amount of material that's been written for the church, by the church, over the last two millennia that is written in Greek as its original language. Knowing Greek allows you to start to explore that, to specialize in it, and to benefit from it in a way that knowing English just cuts you off from doing. So those are four reasons that it's helpful to know the original language of the New Testament if you're studying biblical counseling or preaching or apologetics or church history. Now, if you've got another reason that I've missed and maybe you can think of some, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you there. And I'd love to learn from your ideas as well on this as well because it's going to be beneficial for all of us. So leave a comment, let us know other reasons that it's going to be helpful to know the original language if you're studying these other areas. Now, if you're doing these sorts of studies and you are interested in learning Greek, and maybe your seminary or school hasn't taught you or you want to refresh your Greek, then we'd love to help you. We'd love to be a blessing to you in that way. Go to bma.to slash get started and we'd love to help you get started with your journey to learn or refresh or master the Greek of the New Testament. That's what we do and we look forward to doing that with you as well. Thanks so much for watching this video. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Until then, keep taking small, consistent steps toward mastery. I'll see you there.